Right guys, the last part in the trilogy of pitch perfect technique. How we can get better from 100 yards and in. First video was all about technique, using the body more, using the arms less, getting really good connection, really getting good strike, good delivery. Second video was all about distance control. So distance control is massively important. So I don't, I don't believe players hit the ball right and left as much as do hit the, sh the ball short and long. So distance control and how we can get that really good and how you can actually measure it, get really good at it. The last one is all about height control. So being able to control the height of a pitch is a massively valuable tool when out on the golf course for a number of different reasons. Either if the golf course conditions are windy, if you've got to get over something, if you've got to get under something, if you've got the pin at the back where you've got to land it in the middle of the green and hop it up, or the pins at the front where you've got to get it high and stop it quick. Now, a lot of players might like the idea, they might like a favourite pitching club. So I love to pitch my 54. My 54 is one of my favourite pitching clubs, my 54 degree that is. And I like to try and kind of stick with that if then, if I feel confident with a shot, but I want to shape it differently. I want to hit the ball higher or lower. Now, the way we're going to hit the ball higher and lower, there's two aspects to height with a pitch. Speed plays a massive part in it. If we hit the ball fast, we'll add height, we'll add velocity, the ball goes up. We create more spin, the ball goes up, and it, 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 it stays up. You get a lot of spin that way, but it stays up in the air. So speed is a massive factor of how you can either get the ball high or reducing the speed to help you hit the ball lower. The other main factor is dynamic loft. So how much loft of that golf club you actually present at the moment of contact. So I can turn this 54 degrees into a seven iron, or I can turn it into a 90 degree wedge, depending on how I, how I actually approach the ball, how much either shaft lean I have, or how little shaft lean I have, can massively dictate the height, either the height of the ball or the, the lowness of the shot. I don't believe setup needs to massively change because we're already happy that we're striking the ball well with, with technique. We know the ball in the middle, sternum in the middle, stance slightly open to the left to allow our hip rotation to, to move through the shot. We already know that we're going to strike the ball well. So putting the ball back is going to jeopardise that. Putting the ball forward is going to jeopardise that. The only thing we can control is height, is loft and speed. So if I was just to hit a normal wedge shot of 54 degree, I'm going to hit um, one of my 11 to 1 swings. So my 11 to 1 swing, which we did in the last video, hits me about 92 yards. So I'm going to go perfect pitching setup, perfect pitch setup, 11 to 1 swing and hit it normal. This is the normal 11 to 1 swing. That's gone relatively high, as that's just a very normal height. That's gone 88 yards carry, and my launch angle, so the angle the ball came off the face was 40.9 degrees, so 41 degrees. Okay, remember that number. And that's carried 88 yards. Now, at that height, that speed and that spin, that's going to stop pretty quickly and, and stop and, and grab on. It is. Well, let's say now the pin's at the back, and we want to land the ball at a similar distance, about 88 yards, 8, 90 yards, but we want to reduce the, the flight, we want to get the ball coming in lower, either into wind or getting the pin at the back. We've got to now change the dynamic loft as we come into hit. We've got to make sure that our golf club is leaning forward more without hitting any more downwards. As soon as we start to hit downwards, we're going to again jeopardise strike, and also, if we hit downwards too much, we're actually going to get the ball coming off the face a little bit hotter, a little bit higher. So we still need to come through the ball shallow, but we need to lead that shaft forward. Now, at setup, this can, this can be changed quite a lot. Now, this is only one aspect. Don't forget the other aspect, which is speed. So let's say now this time I'm going to go still in my perfect pitch up setup, but this time I'm not going to change my ball position, but I'm going to lean the shaft more aggressively forward. I'm starting to preset my shaft lean. I'm already starting to preset it. We're trying to now come back into the ball at the exact same position with less speed. I still want you to do 11 to 1 swing, but less speed. Control the speed. We don't want to smash it into it. We want to control the speed. 
So we've got the shaft leaning forward more. We're still going to try and land it about 88, 90 yards. And we're looking to beat 40.9 degrees of launch angle. 11 to 1 swing. I've already got that shaft preset forward. Much, much softer. That landed at 84 yards. So only four yards difference to the first swing. But the launch angle was 31 degrees. I managed to drop nine degrees of launch angle and the flight was so, so much lower. Ridiculously lower. I probably, if I'm dead honest with you, I probably came into that a tiny bit steeper with my attack angle. I've taken a little bit more of a divot, but it's still with my pitch perfect technique, I still struck it really well. So alignment to the left, ball position still in the middle. I'm going to preset that shaft lean. So I've got much more full shaft lean without changing my ball position. 11 to one swing, but hit the ball with less power. And I'm really trying to lean that shaft forward to the contact. 86 yards of carry, 30.8 degrees of launch. I've dropped the launch angle by 10 degrees just by keeping the shaft leaning forward and hitting the ball a lot softer, but in the same swing setting, still in that 11, 11 to one swing setting. But then we say, okay, well, let's get more height. So let's say we actually need to get a lot more height on the shot this time. So we're going to go slightly opposite way. Let me get it in GC2. Might have to just move the unit. No, we're good, we're good. So this time we're going to keep ball position again in the middle. We're going to open the stance still. Height comes from speed. It does, we want speed through the ball. But this time we don't want the shaft to lean forward. We want it relatively level. We want to maintain as much loft as we can. So this time I'm going to keep the shaft almost straight, almost dead level. We're confident in, our, in the technique that we're using that we're not going to fat it, even keeping that shaft level. So shaft is now level, 11 to one swing. But on the way down, I'm going to turn my body slightly faster. Maintain the loft this time, maintain the loft. So I'm maintaining the loft. I'm going to swing through this a little bit faster, but still do 11 to one swing. So I still did my 11 to one swing then. That carried 83 even though I swung faster, it carried 83, but the launch angle was 43 degrees. So again, I gained more height. I gained more height than what I would do normally. 40 degree was my benchmark normal pitch of, of, lot, of launch angle. And I gained more height that time by maintaining loft and swinging through the ball faster without actually swinging longer. So I'd turn my body faster through the ball. Shaft is level, ball position, open stance, I'm keeping that shaft level, very different to when trying to hit it low. I cut that shaft much more level, 11 to one swing with speed. Much more height, loads more height. It's a little bit shorter that time, only 78 yards. Let's try and get the, that, that distance slightly more back up. But it launched at 43, I got more height, again more height off the loft and presenting more loft to that shot. I'm not needing to open the face. I'm just maintaining the loft that's already on the club. Loads more. That's perfect. 79 yards, 44 degrees of launch angle. So without really, I'm not, I've not changed loads there and I'm still hitting it there and there about the same distance because my swing length hasn't changed. It's just the speed I'm approaching into the ball and the dynamic loft, whether I'm presenting less loft to hit it low, presenting the same loft to hit it higher, presenting a little bit of shaft lean to hit it normal, and then getting the speed to travel faster to hit it higher, sl slightly slower to hit it lower, slower, slower to hit it lower, there you go. But presenting either more loft, less loft at setup, but maintaining the same swing each time. Guys, go and try that with different wedges as well. That was just me doing it with the 54. This works with every wedge. Speed equals height, loft equals height. So your speed and loft, you'll hit it high. 
If you want no height, if you want to hit a low one, one of those low checky ones, lean the shaft forward, but hit the ball softer. We need to reduce the velocity, reduce the speed. It's the only way we can get the ball to actually come out lower, but it's still going to pitch about the same distance. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little kind of trilogy of how you can improve your pitching from 100 yards and in. We need to get good at this game, this side of the game, guys. It's a huge percentage, 100 yards and in. Huge percentage. If we can hit more greens, if we can get more distance control, we're going to give ourselves much many, many more birdie chances, many more par chances. We can recover better. It's a huge part of the game. Guys, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this trilogy and improved from this trilogy, please let us know down below. Comment, let us know if this pitching style has massively revolutionised your game. I'd love to hear your thoughts, I really do. Subscribe by clicking the big button here, free to do. Keeps you connected with myself. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter at Rick Shields PGA and fan page Rick Shields. Guys, thanks for watching. If you've not seen the other two, do check them out. Check out all the trilogy, stick it in a playlist, save it, watch it again in the future, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.